Hey everyone, Dom here and welcome to another Cubase Secrets episode. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can record and monitor with effects in Cubase and how to add things like reverb when you're tracking vocals, even if you don't have an audio interface that has DSP effects. Let's get started. There are many reasons why you'd like to record or monitor with effects. One reason, for example, right here, I have an electric guitar, and if I want to perform on this electric guitar, I would need to run it through an amp simulator plugin. Because if I play it right now, I have the direct input sound, which is not really inspiring, and I cannot really adjust my performance according to the amp sound that I'm going to have later on. So what happens when you connect your guitar or your microphone to your audio interface? You're going to get this direct sound. And depending on the audio interface that you have, you can adjust the level of this direct sound in the audio interfaces mixer. Or if your audio interface offers direct monitoring, you can do this in Cubase. But for this example, I'm going to assume that you don't have an audio interface that offers direct monitoring. So what do we do if we want to monitor and record with effects in Cubase. Before we go and add effects, I want to show you the difference between a normal channel in Cubase and an input channel. So as you can see, I have my mixer here and this is my microphone here. This comes from my microphone preamp and you can see my voice going in there. This is the direct input from our audio interface into Cubase. And right here, I have my guitar input. So if I play my guitar, you will see... If I open my channel settings, I'm also able to see my spectrum analyzer in real time. This input channel is what you should look at in order to get your gain levels right. So if I play... I'm hovering around minus 12, which is great, but I don't want to be going near zero. Now, as you can see here, we have insert effects here, which means you could add effects right here and record with them. But I would suggest against doing this because when you add your insert effects right here, these are going to be baked into the sound. So that means if I add a specific plugin here, I cannot get rid of this after the fact. So I have to commit to this. Quite honestly, there are zero reasons why you would like to do this. So I'm going to skip this and I'm going to show you the right way so that you can monitor with effects. Let's say I want to record my guitar. All I need to do is add an audio track right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select my input. This is my guitar input. And here's what we can do right here, which is really clever. Normally my configuration should be set to mono because my guitar is a mono instrument. But if I want to monitor using reverbs, delays, chorus effects that are stereo effects, you can also set your configuration to stereo, which means even though I'm going to record a mono signal, I'm going to monitor in stereo. So I'm going to add this track. And there we go, we have this channel right here. If I hit record, I'm recording my DI sound. Now, of course, like we said, I want to monitor my guitar with effects. In order to do this, you need to do a couple of things. The first thing is you need to make sure that you lower the volume of your direct signal of your guitar all the way down from your audio interfaces mixer. Now, if I play my guitar, you will see it goes into the guitar input, but we don't hear anything. Now, in order to be able to hear something, we need to turn on monitoring. And this is this little icon right here. So if I click on monitor, now I can listen to my guitar sound again. And this way, now I can start adding effects. For example, I can add a VST amp rack. And now by having the monitor activated, I can immediately play and monitor through these effects. <laughs> And the great thing that I can do now is I can set my level right here by using this fader. And like I mentioned before, I can even monitor stereo effects like this preset from Guitar Rig. Mm. 
When you monitor this way, one thing that you need to remember is that you need to set up your buffer size on your audio interface lower so that you don't have latency and you can play comfortably. This you can do by going to Studio, Studio Setup, select your audio interface and you can set up your buffer size right here. In my case, 128 is absolutely perfect, but you can go lower. The lower you go, you're going to have a little bit more tax on your CPU. But in general, I would say anything from 256 and below would be perfect for this. Now, here's what's cool. If I record now, I'm monitoring with effects, but I'm actually recording without effects. So let's solo this track. And let's deactivate the effects. So as you can see, I recorded the DI sound and now I have full control if I want to change these effects and I want to try different amp, different reverbs, different chorus, I can do this because I didn't record with the effects printed. Especially if you're recording guitars, you're going to thank yourselves for doing this because this way you have the DI signal, which is way, way easier to quantize if you want to correct the timing than a distorted signal that goes through an amp because we have defined transients there. Now, let me give you another use case. Let's say you want to record vocals and you want to monitor your vocals through a nice comfort reverb, but you don't have an audio interface that has a DSP reverb that you can add. You can do this in Cubase very easily and the best part of it is you can still have your vocal with zero latency, your dry vocal. In order to do this, make sure you can listen to your vocal coming directly from your audio interface. So pull up this fader on your audio interface and make sure you can hear the direct sound of your vocal. Next, create an audio track. In this case, I'm going to have a mono track because of course my vocal is going to be mono and I'm going to add the track. Now, when I activate monitoring, you will see that I'm going to get double the sound because I can hear the voice coming from my audio interface and also from Cubase's monitoring. But now let me show you how you add the reverb. Go to the channel settings and here we will create a send effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and add FX channel to send one. The configuration is going to be stereo because I want to have a stereo reverb and this can be any reverb plugin. It doesn't matter if it's a Cubase stock plugin or if it's a third party plugin. In this case, I'm going to use the UAD Pure Plate Reverb and I'm going to add it. And here's the trick. What you need to do is you need to make sure that your reverb is set to pre-fader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this icon right here and now we've set this reverb to pre-fader mode. Let's turn it all the way down for now. And now I'm going to activate my monitoring. Now you will see that I get the double sound again. Don't worry about this, just bring down the fader. And now you only hear your direct sound of the vocal with zero latency. And now check this out. I can start adding my reverb like this. Hello. So what we have is our dry vocal with zero latency and any reverb plugin we want right there for monitoring. How cool is that? When you're done with recording, all you need to do is turn off monitoring and then pull your fader back up. So to recap, what you can do in Cubase, you can record with effects, you can monitor with effects, and you can also record directly with no latency while adding comfort reverb for your singer. I hope you enjoyed this video, have loads of fun, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.